call the September Commission to order. Uh, roll call. Chair Linda. Here. Vice Chair Jamie. Here. Secretary Pat. Here. Alderman Mayor will wait and see. Commissioner Cieslik has been excused. Commissioner Mayor will wait and see. Commissioner Cieslik has been excused. Commissioner Sharma. Here. All right, and uh, next is the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Unfinished business. Um, Jim is probably the most interested in the um, funding for the garden giveaway. The most interested in the um, funding for the garden giveaway from the night out. I don't know if you have any updates or. I do not. Okay. And may I just interject something here about funding? I think we're going to be looking at it on the agenda. Yes, we'll list it as a future. Agenda. As a future, okay, because that'll have definitely some bearing on um, a report, if you will, that I'm going to give for that Franklin Library's trunk and treat. Okay. Um, okay, I am. Um, or Dan, do you happen the first item under unfinished business? Jim is excused for the evening, um, but he was probably most in this interested in the funding for the garden giveaway. Did you have any interested in the funding for the garden giveaway? Did you have any information or update or? Um, I do not. Okay. And check, Dan. Did you have a chance to review the minutes from the August twenty? Did everything look? Look, look, good minute. Okay, you didn't see any. Okay. Good. 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 All right, moving on to item B then. Review of articles for the Franklin newsletter. What are our dates again? Let's see. October 20th. I believe there was an article submitted about Buckhorn in advance. Uh, I would have to double check though. And um, as we discussed at our previous meeting too, we were going to look into having other sources of articles since the root pike win has not been as fruitful as would be ideal. So, um, deal. So, um, I'll have to double check because I think there was one that you selected in the spring, and I'll make sure that. Now we had on the appro under approval of minutes from unfinished from last month that the root pike win has an article on Buckthorn for the September news. The root pike win has an article on Buckthorn for the September newsletter. I haven't gotten my September newsletter yet. It's, it's due out this week, September twentieth. Do we either? And didn't we also talk about potentially saying if students wanted to be a source from Patrick's um, class, if they wanted to be a source for any future articles? Oh, mentioned that. Okay, I I did not follow up, or I I did not. I was I missed that. So. You want me to contact him to see if his students would have any input as to articles 
for. If there was any aspiring authors. Okay, here. all right, let me put this down because I, I apologize. I missed yes. this last week. Okay, so Franklin High School. Very good, thank you. I, again, I apologize. Uh, I don't know if there was any other ideas or thoughts or sources. Um, the city Forester had a suggestion to me about the invasive species consortium. The Forester had a suggestion to me about the invasive species consortium. Um, Commissioner Cieslak shared the email that's in your current packet, mm -hmm. um, but they might be a resource for for a future article as well because they're They've got a wealth of knowledge. So. Who is this? Yes. That was in the packet, wasn't it? Yep. Southeast Wisconsin Invasive Species Consortium. Okay. Yeah. I do have a question. If we find an article they have, is it something where we need to reach out and ask them to reprint it? I probably, yeah, okay. because of copyright. Uh, they might have some obvious licensing information or like public consumption on their website, but. Um, they probably want to know. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I'm just thinking too. If we find something else that's something relatively useful, how you know to submit it? Is it just can I email the company and get their approval? And it, is it just can I email the company and get their approval and bring it to the council meeting? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's like university resources and that kind of thing. They would you can ask them how they want to be cited. Yeah. Anything else on that? Okay, moving on. Buckthorn subcommittee activity. Activity. Um, I'll speak to that kind of based on what we talked about last week or last time, last month. Um, we've been holding off for still waiting to add it to our packet. Um, it looks like there's some traction being gained considering it was published by the journal Sentinel. Um, about the invasive stuff going on. So hopefully they'll have something out and then from there we can kind of base some things off of what they've got. Okay, so we're looking at uh, possible input then from the Southeastern Wisconsin Invasive Species Consortium. Yeah, and then also, um, well I guess that's where this article is coming from. So. Well, I guess that's where this article is coming from. So that, and then we're also waiting for the Milwaukee County was supposedly supposed to have some sort of invasive plan coming out in winter. So I believe December was their goal. So the park system. So once we can get something from them, I think it'll be beneficial then and provide some support towards anything that we want to do here in the city. And then I guess the second thing would be, are, is the library still quote, like limited for participation? Yes. So then that whole education piece then is going to be limited, maybe just the newsletter for now until... And website. And website, yeah. Yeah, I guess I'm just here to provide any questions you may have about the list. I think I let that know for a couple of months. And it kind of came about with uh, the municipal ordinances mm -hmm. and the three, three ordinances of 240 4 of the Masters to Retreat Plan. And Article B, if there's about 11 of them that they actually say are allowed to be planted on city property, which is uh, Emerald Queen, Norway Maple, which is actually Norway Maple's invasive. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have Red Maple, which really does not well, do well on our streets. Uh, red Oak, as well as it gets also 
And then the low wave lindens are over planted, the uh, over 10% of the street population are locusts are ready, so we only be planting thing over 10%. Uh, male gain codes, we, that one is allowed. And then we have Marshall Steelus Green Ash, and on purple white ash, so we don't have to with all those trees. Mm -hmm. And then all we have left is common hackberry and horse chestnut, so I kind of come up with to kind of make it more official and put it back in the actual municipal ordinance. And that was a list I kind of provided with you, as well as undesirable street tree lists. So sometimes we get homeowners that want to go out and plant their own stuff, or somehow it magically appears on the right away. And I go, well, how that gets there? And I'm going to go take it out because we know it's not, you know, a decent street tree. And I'm going to go take it out because we know it's not, you know, a decent street tree. And at least we have some more um, authority to work with the same, you know, that's an undesirable street tree. That's not something that went on our roads or we're taking it out, or you can take it out. Or move it into your own yard where it's a better spot for it. You gave some indication as to an indication as to an ordinance. Can yeah, you it's the municipal ordinance uh, section two forty dash four. A municipal ordinance yep. section two two forty, which is our tree ordinance, and then the section four master street tree plans and its uh, substance. It's a master street plan? Yeah, master street tree plan. Uh, years ago, the developers, they're still required to put one tree for about 85 feet of um, street fudge should be a tree planted. Uh, years ago, the developers were putting the trees in, they were getting kind of substandard tree, getting kind of substandard trees, just throwing them off the truck, not really getting diggers hotline, not knowing where the driveways were going when these developments were going to plant the trees out before the houses were even put in. We had a lot of issues with them being on top water lines or too close to our driveways were cut in in the future when the houses went up. So uh, the city were cut in in the future when the houses went up. So uh, the city kind of took over the planting of the trees. We still required the, the developers to pay for the tree and our crews go out and plant them once the house is in and the finished tree is in. So we know where the utilities are going to be, we know where the driveway is. We can kind of find the best spot for the tree and also kind of work with the tree, at least if you give them an option that they can kind of pick from a list. They can do their research and say, you know, this tree may look nice here, this tree may not be as messy as they thought it was going to be, that kind of thing. So that's kind of where it's going with that. Do, do you typically work with the bordering cities like you know, Green Day or Oak Ridge between your list and their list? Um, a lot of this was. I kind of got from their, their lists already, like Oconomowoc had a good list, Heartland had a good mm -hmm. list, um, Oak Creek has a pretty decent list as well, so okay. it kind of has their own list, and I've kind of branched out and picked some things I've tried in the past and kind of just kind of rolled them all into one, okay. one list here, in the past and kind of just kind of rolled them all into one, okay. one list here. And it gives a little bit more information too as far as like the growth habit, um, the height, that kind of stuff, so if someone asks, well I want this here, and like, well, that's going to be way too big for this site. You know, there might be only a spot where the sidewalk and the curb is only a three or four foot piece. Some spots is usually 15 feet where there's no sidewalk. So, well, we can put a larger tree there or it's going to call us back. And there's going to be snow put in there. Let's put a smaller, smaller size tree in. So, and just a little bit more information for folks. And Tom, are we looking at, again, the st uh, street tree list for replacements, basically? Is yeah. I'm referencing the municipal ordinance, again, you know what I'm saying? Right, this is kind of, it has okay. a whole outdated list of, okay. of trees that we kind of put on the roads. Okay. I do appreciate the formatting and all the extra information. Thank you. A motion or something like that to adopt that or replace or amend the municipal ordinance? So you could make a recommendation to Common Council that this preferred list of street trees replace the existing list. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I still have to talk to that thing. They'll put it in there where we can still edit it in the future without it having to go through so many processes. I, it kind of reads that way the way I'm reading it, where once those plans are adopted, they can kind of be put in mm -hmm. in that way. But I think the language may have to be kind of worded by him. Though so we can review it once a year on an annual basis because I can the this so we can review it once a year on an annual basis because I used to plant a lot of Cleveland select pears which now they're fire invasive so now we had to kind of cut those out of our list of, of you know recommended planting species. 
Okay, so it's a bit premature for us. Premature for us. Is that what I'm hearing? Well, I think we could still make the recommendation, but it may okay. not be taken up, I think, by council. Yeah. Because well, they got a lot going on, I think, at the UDO where you're writing anything else. So oh, that's just, just right kind of right <laughs> too, so. Um, you can make a recommendation about the tree list, or you could make or, I mean, there's kind of lots of options here. Yeah. Um, but I think it would be appropriate to at least recommend that the list of preferred trees be updated. Is there a yeah. list of prohibited trees? There is no list of prohibited trees, too, so that could be two separate motions, maybe. Sure. Yeah. Well, and sure. well, cottonwoods are permitted elsewhere. Yep, further in the ordinance, I believe that one yeah. is. See, isn't that concerned? It, it's not an invasive, is it? Do they? The cottonwoods, no, cottonwoods, no, is cottonwoods and the box sellers is prohibited being a nuisance that yeah. they're messy and the box seller bug. Being a nuisance that yeah. they're messy and the box seller bug is. Problem, I guess. I don't even know when these were adapted or if they should even be in there anymore, but that's, I guess, for a different, different day. discussion. Yeah. Um, well, I'll make a motion that we recommend the um, new tree list to uh, preferred trees. I second that. Do you want to add in there that we review it once a year or something like that? Do we want to do it once a year or maybe like a three year cycle? Like, do you think? Uh, I think yearly is fine. It doesn't okay. take a lot. It's to say, yeah, we looked at it. Everything yeah. looks good. It was yearly. Okay. So if it's just something that they're starting to worry about, we can say, hey, this is on the watch true. list. Let's, let's pull this off by planting program stuff. Want me to repeat it really quick? Uh, let, me, let me read it back. Okay, Jamie, you're motioning, yeah. and Commissioner Sharma is seconding that we recommend um, a list. Is seconding that we recommend um, a list or we recommend a new tree list to replace existing trees uh, and review annually. Yep. Is that sound that captures? Okay. okay. All right. Um, then oh. we we do, we don't have to do a separate, just a voice vote. Voice. Yeah. Okay. All in. You, your call. <laughs> All in favor. Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Right. on the PC participation in the UDO task force. It was canceled. So the meeting was canceled because there wasn't going to be a quorum, and so we're just waiting for another date to come back out. Okay, that meeting date was August 26th. Yeah. August 26th. Yes. And I feel like it might. Because you just said the budget's going on. Yeah, so there was some level of discussion at Common Council about the UDO, and I don't recall what meeting it was at, but um, because they did not have quorum, what meeting it was at, but um, because they did not have quorum, the special session for this was canceled. Um, there has been one public input session here at City Hall, um, which uh, the consultants were here with a number of panels. It was not well attended, um, and so in the department also did a public input session at the St. Martin's Fair, um, and he took a, a set of panels to the fair, um, basically to collect information about what um, what people think about the community. Um, it would be appropriate for me, and I will have to do it um, through an email, dedicated to this project for public input. So it has a map on it where you can note um, things that you think are wonderful about the community, things that you think might be less than wonderful. Um, have you? I, I've saw, I think I saw it when I connected with Gail on something. You've got something on the desk there. I think I would it something like this to be included like in the newsletter? That's a really good question. Um, uh, how else are you going to read? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's because I didn't even know anybody was at. We mm -hmm. went to St. Martin's that fair, and I was only there on Sunday, so got in there. Yeah. yeah, we probably kind of remember where we went. No, we went on Sunday. Yeah. So, okay. but then you know, you're not looking for. You know, you're not looking for. Don't know it. You're not really looking for it. So, mm -hmm. we did have some nice interactions um, with yeah. the public. It's it's the planning department. We would hope to do this kind of public input. Yeah. For this kind of project. Um, so. 
<laughs> maybe just a suggestion to include this information in upcoming. In, um, maybe just a suggestion to include this information in upcoming in um, the next newsletter, yeah. next city newsletter. Deadline is Friday, October twenty second, with the week of November 29th as far as delivery. That's a really good idea. Um, but I will send. Um, and I think it has a feature where you can attach photographs, um, which is nice because part of part of how zoning works is that it actually does have an influence on what your community looks like, um, whether that's in terms of landscaping, which I know there's been a lot of discussion about, um, or the dimensions of buildings. Um, some communities really right too. So um, there's kind of a lot of different ways that this could be of interest to the commission, not just from an environmental standpoint, but also just tell all your friends. <laughs> so, um, so I'll send that website out, if not today, then tomorrow. Um, and then there will be other input sessions tomorrow. Um, and then there will be other input sessions, but at present I'm not aware of the schedule, so. If I could just add, the council did review it, or we, we had an input session two weeks ago, not last night, but two weeks ago on Tuesday, I think it was with the uh, agency that's doing the, the rewrite and um, accumulating the comments and things. To me, it just seems like the input sessions are just kind of free-for-alls. It would be nice if they would focus on the, somehow and guide the input session. Um, what they refer to as a diagnosis step. And so there is a little bit of that type of vibe. Um, because they want to hear um, what people's initial thoughts are, um, and then they'll, as they start to develop recommendations, they'll be more structured. Hopefully. That's so, as a point well taken, but mm -hmm. so, as a point well taken, but there's a little bit of purpose to the yeah. looseness. <laughs> so, the brainstorming. Yeah, um, that's very much like the panels that were at one of the public. I only was able to attend one, but. Um, it's literally like, put a sticker on what you think is interesting, so. Um, put a sticker on what you think is interesting, so. Um, it's a common technique, and then you narrow your focus. Yeah, I get so. that. But for this, it just seems like it's such a broad thing. It yeah. seems like it needs a little narrowing to begin with. That's kind of, I very much hear that, like, that with the, the degree to which the UDO is going to be a lot of discussion, I think, so. Um, the alderman is probably more familiar than the rest of you, but it, it is occasionally really, there's a lot going on there and not all of it is logical or constructive, so. <laughs> yeah. Okay, moving on to new business. City water supply testing overview. I apologize, unfortunately, I have not had a chance to do any reviewer research. I apologize, unfortunately, I have not had a chance to do any reviewer research. On this. So, um, just as a general point of information, the water for the city of Franklin comes from the city of Oak Creek. Um, there is a board of water commissioners. That's the extent of where I am right now. Okay. To be continued. Okay. Any update on landfill life expectancy and future plans? Um, I don't remember what I shared last time. So, just as there is a plan for the quarries reclamation, one would hope there will eventually be a plan for the reclamation of the landfill, but it doesn't exist yet. Um, and that's as far as I got on that. Okay. Do I have a question? Do they normally start making the landfills light stage? I don't know. Um, so there are the state regulates mm -hmm. um, waste disposal facilities in a couple of different categories. So landfills have requirements, um, and I'm pretty sure it, they vary depending on when the landfill was open because how the landfill changed okay. over time. Um, so. I, I haven't researched this in depth, but I can tell you that the requirements tend to vary and they're regulated by the state of Wisconsin. The DNR is also to 
essentially the state's EPA. Mm -hmm. um, so they regulate what you can do and how you should close things. And um, so they regulate what you can do and how you should close things and what methane capture looks like and that kind of thing. Um, another thing that was commented on is that methane recapture, if there's a pipeline that comes out of the landfill, um, it goes to down there. Yep. And that would probably remain in place, remain in place after the landfill has been closed. So All the way to Jones Island. Yeah, they use it for the Melorganite. Yep. That's interesting we're yeah. discussing this because historic Milwaukee has their annual doors open. Do the Jones Island and I am on the Jones Island That's tour on Saturday. I'm kind of a nerd. <laughs> You're in the right room. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great tour. It's a lot of fun. You get to see a lot of things. And that, like that site is actually smaller than the South Shore site. So it's like that's why it's a good tour. Okay. Good timing. Good yeah. timing. You'll get to learn a lot. Okay, uh, continue next meeting. All right, um, item C, Franklin Library trunk, item C, Franklin Library trunk or treat event. Showtime. <laughs> Here, this is for you. Well, okay, my hazmats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Marion, share with Tom here. Okay, I was so excited about this when Jennifer Leffel, the library director, approached me on it but I really didn't have any information or details. For one thing, I had no idea that this has been going on for several years in the library parking lot prior to the official City of Franklin trick-or-treat. And what this entails, Franklin trick-or-treat. And what this entails, again, is very similar it seems to me like the National Night Out, where you have possibly different organizations that want to promote themselves. So a sign up for a space, and the space isn't a table, so to speak. It's the trunk of their car, and they decorate it with Halloween decor, and then hand out information. In addition to handing out information, the library accepts up to 600 children that can register for this. This is where I'm rolling over the item that we really don't have any additional funding for the Environmental Commission. And this would be where we would, again, if we were to participate in this, you know what I'm saying, we have to definitely be prepared to hand out treat it is up to 600 children that might participate. I'm gonna recommend that we look into this for next year. The very fact that we had National Night Out mm -hmm. in August, this might be very close. Mm -hmm. What I would like to do that evening of October 21st is just say and just see what we might learn from it. I went on their Facebook page and I took a look at the trunk or treat from 2019 and I saw like Cousin Submarine forward dental, I saw, I saw some businesses, you know, and I don't know how we can really, forward dental, I saw, I saw some businesses, you know, and I don't know how we can really compete with a business and hold that much interest, so to speak, but I would like to check it out um, that evening of October 21st if I'm not sitting at a Baseball Brewer game. game. <laughs> Dan, you were late, I've got, Dan, you were late, I've got postseason tickets all the way through to the World Series. I mean, Whoa. yeah. So excited. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Do you know, so I can um, mm -hmm. put it in the schedule and we're open on Thursday nights most of the time. Um, I can, do you know how, so 600 kids, so how do you register your um, I can look, I'll look on the library website. You want to check, yeah, and everything is outside, even the, reg uh, that night when the kids come apparently, okay, so they're registered and they're handed like um, 
some type of uh, bag or something that they will go to the different trunks to, you know, collect different trunks to, you know, collect their treats. Mm -hmm. But again, it's just kind of a great opportunity, especially for any new businesses that have opened in Franklin, um, like I say, to take part in this. And I think what Cousins was doing two years ago, what Jennifer mentioned to me, Cousins was doing two years ago, what Jennifer mentioned to me, rather than um, handing out a treat per se, a, they handed out like maybe a $5 gift certificate or something. Dan, any experience with this that you can? No, no I'm afraid not. Okay. It start, registration starts October 1st. Okay. Okay. Um, so you can sign up via online and then they're doing entries limited to 200 individuals per hour. <laughs> but again, you see my query about the funding, I mean, yeah, it would definitely be, I'm saying for this, it would probably be $150 or something like that up front. Yeah. Well, and I just looked up too, like ways to have like an eco-friendly. So like, even if we give them a little package of making something they can use for on Halloween, like a light up thing or something like that, there's still going to be a cost mm -hmm. to it. There's going to be a cost mm -hmm. to it. All right, so you will give us the update at the next meeting? If, uh, if there's a problem that October 21st, that I know I won't be able to be there. Well, I might sign the kids up. I was just gonna say, yeah, would you be my... Yeah. Or if you were done. I have it on here, I'll even make a calendar reminder to sign okay. the kids up with that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. If you're worried about your brewer's tickets being used, and you really want to <laughs> Observe the chunk of Thank you. I know. <laughs> it's it's pretty special. Yeah, my it it's my nephew and I have this, you know, we're seasoned seat holders and uh so he's from Sheboygan, so it's he has to really oh, wow. yeah, so he has to take like weekend games, you know what sure. I'm saying? And I'm I'm the take like weekend games, you know what sure. I'm saying? And I'm I'm the weeknight person. Okay. Yeah, so that's where my Responsibility comes in. Oh, <laughs> <so> <laughs> okay, uh, I'll talk about the next meeting scheduled today. Uh, I'll talk about the next meeting scheduled for October 27th. I am most likely not available. Pat may not be available. Because I might be at, depending, yeah, that would, yeah. Do we want to? Move or will not have an NRSE. What was the November December meeting? When is that one? December 8th would then be the next meeting mm -hmm. if we cancel. Do we have to decide? I mean, when are you going to, when will you have? A better idea. Um, probably after this next week. So by fourth, I would know. Okay, and I should know by October fifteenth. But again, I'm not. I'm. So if you're gonna change the date, you would want to do that during this meeting so that it is part of yeah. the okay. record. Okay. All right. Yep. Um, if you don't have quorum, then there would not. If you don't have quorum, then there would not be a meeting. Mm -hmm. um, would be the alternative. Um, so, or you could meet without the chair and the secretary. Which Jamie? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, You're going to multitask that night. <laughs> I know, right? Um, You're going to multitask that night. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Um, I would say if we need to have a meeting for a reason, so whether we talk about trunk or tree, or we talk about anything that pops up, we can do it the week after. But that's the week day after there's an election that Tuesday, depending if, you know, I don't know what time everyone goes and votes, but it might be a long night Tuesday. Oh, I, I think. I don't know what Tuesday, what elections are coming up on Tuesday. <coughs> if 
Is there an election? Are there local seats open? Or? I don't know. I just have election day. Google will put it in my calendar. Yeah, I have Yeah, I don't think we have I don't think we do. Wait, hang on, let me look at this. Because nobody was been campaigning. Like, everyone's no, waiting for April. There's nothing local. I don't, I'm trying to think of really anything statewide, and I can't think of anything either. We haven't been campaigning for April. No, so. next spring is going to be very long. Yeah. Yep. April and No, next spring is going to be very long. Yeah. Yep. So that may be for some of the other states, and they just do it as like, hey, this is our normal election day. Mm hmm. Because in that way, if we do have that one in November, then the one in December, like it would be a month away. Mm -hmm. So the folks want to do November 3rd instead of October 27th, one week later, Wednesday night. November 3rd? Mm -hmm. okay. I'm a motion on this. I motion to move the meeting to November 3rd. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. Marion will make sure that that can happen. Find us. Marion will make sure that that can happen. Find us a room. Yep. Or a tent. Uh, a tent. A tree. A trunk. Here we can have an outside meeting. Yeah. Double checking. Motion. Motion. Yeah, no, that's cool flying. <laughs> right. <clears throat> okay, moving on uh, future agenda items. to the funding for environmental commission so the budget process is currently underway um, I don't know if it would be possible to make a request or like even which department would do that so um, I will have to have a conversation with my department head about what that looks like because some of your your materials costs and that kind of thing come out of our department budget um, some are out of public works trees and things right yeah, so some of the things you would do, yeah. Um, I think it's just kind of, so some of the things you would do, yeah. Um, I think it's just kind of spread out through other people's budgets. Um, so I'm not totally sure what that process would look like, but I would put to you that if the commission, if, especially because you like to do events, it would be appropriate to start to say, well, here's what we would use the funding for. Yeah. For sure. That's so, going to get a lot more, you know, how shall I say, that'll carry a lot more weight than trunk or treat. Well, that and then those education opportunities, too, for the Buckthorn. How we mentioned mm -hmm. having those refreshments for people, just so that you're, you're sitting in the meeting, you're not sitting there, like, starting to get parched. Oh, you know, okay. Water. We have some students coming in. When we, right, when we had that, Dan, remember we provided water and then yes. cookies or some type some of snack. snack yeah. yeah, when we did that in the library. So yeah. a small refreshment. Is you know so something like that, or even if we're having somebody come in on their own time, you know it's a courtesy. Yeah. It's a courtesy. It's just something yeah. you know. Here's the start out, or however, it'll make us look a lot nicer and more open for people to come. I will look into it and let you know what the process. Okay. Is. Um, it may be too late to make a request at this point for 2022. Um, but if that is not the case, then I would give you some options to maybe just ask for like a specific dollar amount or whatever at your next meeting. So I'm still learning the budget process myself. So I'm still learning the budget process myself. I'm not directly involved with it typically. So. so I can just say you will follow up at the next meeting. Okay. Alrighty. Okay. The view of tree canopy evaluation for new developments, which I think was requested by Jim. But 
Um, some of this discussion was about um, how trees get evaluated in new developments as part of the natural resource protection evaluation. Um, I can tell you that the short version is that we protect versus developers provide what's called a natural resource protection plan, which you review as part of NRSEs. Um, and they do field delineations. They hire someone to go out there and do that. So we, stand, we typically protect not individual trees, but groups of trees, which are usually referred to as a grove. Groups of trees, which are usually referred to as a grove. I believe it's eight trees. Um, yeah, and this is why I think it's Tom here. <laughs> I think it'd be over 12 inches or mm -hmm. size on them. So that would be a mature tree. Um, yep, that'd be for groves and there's a young woodlet and for mm -hmm. yep, that'd be for groves and there's a young woodlet and for mm -hmm. woodlands. Those definitions are somewhere. And yeah, they're in the UDO, um, partly in the definition section and partly in the natural resource protection standards. So um, we don't protect the main <coughs> so what you see on an NRPP the Natural Resource Protection Plan is the drip line of a group of trees. Um, some developers voluntarily will also identify trees that they think are valuable to get credit towards landscaping, and that's something we encourage. Um, but as we're talking about the, the potential alterations to the UDO standards for this, um, it's basically young woodlands, the diameter at breast height is eight, eight inches? Um, which, so the tree trunk is 8 inches in diameter, um, a mature tree is 12 inches and they have slightly different standards in terms of what constitutes 12 inches and they have slightly different standards in terms of what constitutes a grove. And I think you guys probably understand that a grove is also an ecosystem, so the individual tree could be valuable to the landscape, but the rationale is that the group of trees itself also creates more habitat. So. Yeah, and then they show up on the NRPP. However, you can impact um, trees in development in Franklin up to a certain point without requesting NRSE review. So mature trees, you can remove up to 30% of the total tree area of that drip line um, without requesting an NRSE. And for young woodlands, you can remove up to 50%. So in theory, you could remove four trees or whatever. Yeah. Um, so, and that can be done without review by this body. There is a little bit of a process at, um, so that a zoning compliance be requested if you're doing tree work. Um, I have yet to receive such an application, so I don't know that that process is well understood or publicly, that the public is aware of it, so. Um. Okay, the only thing that I can see where this tree canopy comes into play is when you have a street tree and again you know what I'm saying the canopy is so low that it's going to um, be a visual hazard be an obstacle to traffic yeah I mean that's something that we do have requirements in UDO that things not be in what I mean that's something that we do have requirements in UDO that things not be in what's referred to as the vision triangle so there are areas um, when we're producing new subdivision documents, when the developer is doing that, we require that nothing be placed within, um, it's 60 feet of a corner typically, the radius. Okay. Um, so that there not be anything that's gonna be a visual Which obstruction. Is, is different than what's the municipal code, because we just looked at this recently, and the municipal code is like, there's no set distance. distance. It's just, you can't obstruct a vision corner, that's it, there's no, so that's why actually what it's actually measured, yeah. not from like the center of the intersection, it's measured from like where those two property lines meet, which is already usually 15 yep, feet out of the road. Right so that can be almost the entire yeah. lot length, and then the triangle from there it can be and pretty significant. Yeah, it's a big. And it's not design. very heavily enforced because there's a lot of bad vision coming to the city. Enforced because there's a lot of bad vision coming to the city. Yeah. Well, so we do apply it to signage. So yes. It's universally yep. applied to can't any signage. The signs, yeah. But we don't really like yeah, we, it's the complaint driven. No one is evaluating landscaping on residential property right. unless it's a nuisance. Never get a consent. Yep. Never get a consent. Yep. Um, 
In terms of overall canopy, Tom has some resources that he's been looking at um, to evaluate the health of the tree canopy throughout the city. So the canopy, the community of trees that is, exists in the whole city of Franklin is something that I think you know. It's 35% tree cover. Um, the DNR had done, done one, I think, in 2018. It said 36.7. And then last November, I actually did one because it was part of our uh, girl cohort for Tree City. I did one at Sisters and I actually and she just saw the uh, map and then it takes Google Earth images and it just asks you, zooms in and says, where is this that? Is it on a tree? Is it on a road, a building, a pond, whatever? And it did about 1,200 sites. It's really quick to do. Um, and that came up to be 34, so about 35%. So that's actually pretty substantial. And actually, this. 35%. So that's actually pretty substantial. And actually, the second largest use was grass, so turf. So, curious type wow. of uh, ag grass and agricultural land was 15%. So, buildings was seven, other impervious was two and about 8%. Water was only 2%. So. Really? I wonder what would happen if we layered that with the surface water data viewer. <laughs> right? Um, so that well in is um, the DNR. Uh, bare soil 25, grass 32, and trees 36. So it's pretty good Great. coverage. Is this something that we can share with the commission at a future yeah. meeting? Yeah. So, we'll just have to do. This one actually kind of spells out that I think we did this in a newsletter years ago, or actually kind of spells out that I think we did this in a newsletter years ago or on the city's website and actually spells out the amount of tons of carbon monoxide that those tree canopy removes for 3.4 tons. Um, ozone was like 190 tons, sulfur dioxide 12 tons, uh, avoided 12 tons, uh, avoided runoff 4,000 gallons of avoided runoff evaporation. Save that oh, for our stuff. newsletter for the trees when we yeah. like Arbor Day, come get your trees. Yeah, mm -hmm. what we can do when we're adding trees with how much CO2 we're removing and etc. We actually mm -hmm. did put our, uh, it's pretty young, so there's really not a whole lot of benefits with young trees at this point because there's not a whole lot of capturing space out there yeah. still. So that was kind of interesting to see how much that actually dropped off from. Previous years, where it was more of a large, the old group of the ashes are actually a complete tree tunnels on some of our. This map is really interesting because you can see the impact of, like, of agriculture and it shows up as being the same as industry. Right. Um, but would it affect if you remove the invasive species? It probably yeah. removes a lot of this predominantly our understory of, of the forest. I and mean, you look at forest health, and even when we, we go on the, uh, what Jim was referring to with the young willow and mature willow, nothing's really considered based on species quality. Yeah. It's more like, okay, this is a big green blob on a map, encompasses this much acreage, blob on a map, encompasses this much acreage, but no one really defines. Is that stuff that's in there worth protecting? I think there are a lot of problems I've come across is where homeowners have these spots in their backyard and they kind of really fit a huge house in these smaller lots and push them back for the now. Huge house in these smaller lots and push them back for the now. And like with the ash borer, we had you know, hundreds of dead trees now that are within falling distance of people's houses and they're not really sure what they can do. And then you go back in there, once these larger ash trees are up, there's nothing but buckthorn left. So um, I guess that's. Oh. Fires. And even that too, sometimes the buckthorn is so thick in there for these developers to go in and hire a company and do a tree survey, it's hard to see even walk through there to determine what mm -hmm. is in there. So I don't know if there's some way they can work in it if they're allowed to just go in there and remove all the understory and brush and size and try to kind of see what they have and work that way. I think it's hindering in some, some instances. Well, a lot of times they don't do the inventory inside the grove, but that they can tell that it's not. Right. They'll just walk the
And this is pertinent to some of the UDO discussion as well because it's, do you want to protect some of those tree areas? You can see the corridor of the Root River um, is clearly got a lot of vegetative yeah. stuff. Um, and then some of the disturbed sites to it, some old farmland that kind of now has had volunteer trees come in. A lot of it's box elder, which on one hand is prohibited, so there's kind of some conflicts there with mm. as I come towards prohibited same kind of That's a tricky question. Or rather, undesirable, it comes up quite a bit. Uh, other, you know, other undesirable. Mm -hmm. I mean, this because it's undesirable for street but I mean, it's not desirable in a yard state. It comes in basins. Yeah, I was going to say, how is that going to, is that going to come up under new business? How are we looking at a lot of these future agenda, are we looking at a lot of these future agenda items? That's what I was thinking for this one. Want to see that under new business or kind of keep it on the radar? Future. That's what I would say, future item, and then bring it back like in February-ish. So then that way it's back on the radar so we can get that article or that information into the news article right around Arbor Day. Okay. So maybe whoever does the agenda, maybe we bring it up as new business, or again, new business in, Febu in February. Agenda items or the discussion? Topics or the discussion? Topics, updates? Sounds like nothing. So I do actually, I have something. So um, it's just a funny statement because we're talking about trees. So I took my class because I'm doing an environmental class at the high school and I'm teaching at Check for Diversity. And I met Nathan Hale at this time and age. And um, we were outside and we had five of the same tree right on the street. And I'm just like, how diverse do you think that is? And the students just looked at me like, what do you mean? I'm like, it's all the same tree. Mm -hmm. Like, what can you do about this? And so that was kind of a fun talk now that we talked diversity too. Because sometimes when you drive down a street, you're like, red tree, red tree, red tree, right. red tree. Well, that's wow. great. Why aren't we doing, a lot of times I get a question from the new development, why are we putting the whole Cut the tree down the whole road, and like, well, because we just took down a whole road of trees. Mm -hmm. they have trees. Mm -hmm. So now we're we're sticking at a ten percent roll. Uh, you oh, yeah. ninth hole. Ninth hole, really? Oh. Yeah, just <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I have one other thing. Can we go over our bylaws? I don't know when we want to do it when we have like a dead week or something. But I know that once we get our new committee member we have not like I don't think Jim and I have gone through the I don't know if you Mr. Sherman's even gone through the bylaws that we have as an environmental commission I don't think I have <laughs> so I think let's just bring that kind of back up again and um I don't want to say when we have a dead meeting but when we have maybe time we're not doing um I don't want to say when we have a dead meeting but when we have maybe time we're not doing anything crazy just so we can go back over those and make sure there's nothing that we want to change to them um, or add to them. And like the bylaws would have something in it again as far as two or three year term commi our commitments. That yeah. Each of us, some have two, some have three, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I so, think it has to be, I think it's something that should be reviewed probably every three years actually. Yeah. Yep, and if you have not received them, then I can make sure that you get a copy of them. That would be great. They're actually in the municipal code. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, you've got them tucked in there, don't you? The administrative rules and procedures? Yeah. When was it last time? 2009. 2009. <laughs> I think it's a third. That's 2009. <laughs> I think it's a third. That's pretty typical. 
They're basically the structure of the commission um, and like what your purview is. So how things can get added to an agenda, that kind of thing. So. Yeah, no, I I haven't ever perceived anything more up to date, so I'm presuming this is it. Okay, any other items that you want to cover or add to the next agenda? No, I said but it will almost certainly not be that November 3rd meeting. Um, and then, um, so that is a current application in the department, and I am aware of at least one other one that is in the pipeline. So that may take a while, though, because that's like a restoration and artificial wetland that'll be me so question for Dan have we had a meeting this goes I apologize to the present commissioners here I mean this goes back maybe since I've been on five six years have we had a meeting for the environmental commission where five six years have we had a meeting for the environmental commission where we've had more than one natural resource special exception at a meeting have we or do we usually try to target it to one per meeting, or or have we had? I don't, I don't recall more than one of the meeting, but that doesn't mean it didn't happen. Or I'm saying discussion-wise too, that would really just in terms of the amount of time that goes into the review process, unless they were like directly related to each other and as part of one development, mm -hmm. it's pretty unlikely that I would be reviewing two back to back uh -huh. to get them on your calendar. Quite. Quite a lot that goes into yes and and I mean for us too I mean sometimes they take five minutes sometimes they take 50 minutes yeah. right yeah, yeah. So. okay well there is a motion <laughs> I, I want 758 here I'll, I'll make a motion to adjourn second all in favor aye, aye. anyone opposed all right, we are done.